Welcome back to Psychology of the Unknown, where we do videos on true crime, urban legends, creepypastas, the paranormal, and psychology. So if that's the kind of stuff you're into, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button over the back of the head with a shovel, and then bury it in an unmarked grave while the notification bell watches helplessly. Then leave a message in its blood in the comments below. Also, make sure you stuff the like button into your trunk, and then drive over every pothole you come across at speeds far exceeding the speed limit. Then share the video with your family and friends to get them unknown. Nerved. Today, I'm going to tell you a story about one of my own experiences with ghosts. It involves an old house and a secret in the basement. Stay tuned. Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. Last Kenny 911. What is your emergency? Thank you. Caller, what's the address? Many years ago, I lived in an old mansion with my wife at the time. By today's standards, it would just be considered a big house. But when it was built in the 1800s, it was a mansion. Her parents owned the house and we had our own little apartment upstairs. You see, she had broken her foot and couldn't work, so we had to move in there in order to make ends meet. The house had a total of six bedrooms, with one of them converted into a kitchen and one a living room for us, while another was turned into an office for my then father-in-law. We had our own entrance to the upstairs, since the front door from the driveway opened to a breezeway which doubled as the laundry room. From the breezeway you could get into the garage, the upstairs, and the main portion of the house. As soon as you walked in, the staircase to the upstairs was to the right. The doorway to the basement was in the main part of the house, through the kitchen just under the second floor staircase. When you walked up the stairs, to the right hand side was our living room, which was my wife at the time's old bedroom growing up. If you went into the room and turned right, you would go toward the bathroom, and straight through that was a closet. There were no doors dividing the three. On the other side of the staircase was our kitchen, and straight across from the kitchen door was another bathroom, only this one actually had a door. On the other side of the bathroom was our bedroom. In the days after we moved in, I had experienced a few things that I couldn't explain. The cabinets in our kitchen had opened on their own. Objects seemed to disappear or move on me. And occasionally I would hear someone walking through our apartment while my wife was asleep next to me. No one else was in our part of the house. Her mom had been asleep in her room. And her dad, who was a cop and a coroner at the time, was at work. There was no reason I should have been hearing someone walking around. I couldn't explain it. I thought maybe the floorboards were simply creaking because the house was so old. It was, after all, built sometime before the Civil War. But there were other things as well. Occasionally, I would catch the glimpse of a figure standing in the doorway out of the corner of my eye. Other times, I would hear knocking in the walls. The knocking could have been explained away as mice, since we lived in the country. The glimpse of a figure out of the corner of my eyes could just be shadows and my eyes playing tricks on me. It was somewhat creepy, but I didn't pay much attention to it until it happened. One hot summer night, we were sleeping in bed. There were three windows, two on either side of our queen-size bed and one in a reading nook. There were trees surrounding the house which blocked most of the moonlight. We had our dark blue curtains pulled closed just enough that only a sliver of light shined through. We had gone to bed around 10 that night, and for some reason my eyes popped open at 3 a.m. I know this because the digital alarm clock was on the dresser next to the door which led to the rest of the house at the foot of the bed and to the right slightly. I got this strange feeling that I was being watched, but my wife was sound asleep next to me. I slept on the right hand side of the bed and she was to my left. I turned my head and looked to my right toward the window in the reading nook, but there was nothing. I was laying on my back and when I turned my head back to the natural position, I caught something out of the bottom of my eye at my feet. When I looked down, there was a small boy standing there, peeking over the foot of the bed. He had short brown hair and a bowl cut, and a light blue button-down shirt. He could have been no older than about six years old. That's odd, I thought. We didn't have any kids at the time, so there shouldn't have been one in our room. His hands were resting on the footboard, and his eyes met mine. They were hollow. Not black, per se, but there was no life in them. His face was pale. I blinked slowly, and when my eyes opened again, the boy was gone. I raised my head and took a sigh of relief, and closed my eyes again, turning my head to the right to fall back to sleep. I opened my eyes one more time for a moment, 
wondering if what I had seen was real. But there he was, his face inches from mine. The next thing I knew it was morning, and when my wife woke up, I told her about my experience. I have something to tell you, she said worriedly, not knowing how I would react. But maybe, it might be better if I showed you. She took me down to the basement. It was somewhat of a maze down there. The main room you'd walk down into was quite small, maybe 12 feet by 15 feet. There were a few side rooms, a sub-basement, and even a closed-off room, which was originally an entrance to the house where the servants would come into from the fields and clean their boots so as not to track mud through the house. The walls were brick and the floor was crumbling concrete. Directly across from the stairs, there was somewhat of a hallway which went on about 30 feet and turned in an L shape into a narrower hallway to the left which went on for about another 50 feet. The concrete floor turned to dirt. At the end of this narrow hallway, if you turned to the left in kind of a tight horseshoe, there was an even narrower walkway with a room immediately to the right. We took the dark, tight corridor and there was no room to raise your arms, even if you needed to. As we walked, the hair on the back of my neck stood as straight as a marine, standing at attention. Where is she taking me, I wondered. The walls around me were dirty and crumbling. The air was musty and cold. So cold I could see my breath. That's odd, I thought. It was the middle of summer. We were having a heat wave. True, we were underground, but I shouldn't be able to see my breath. After walking about 20 feet, at the end of this walkway was another small room. The only light up to this point came through the cracks of the brick walls. From a single bulb hanging from the ceiling in the main portion of the basement in front of the stairs. But as soon as you got into this room, there was a pull cord that would turn on another light. When it came on, there in front of us, sunk into the dirt, was the gravestone of a young boy about six years old. She told me it was a grave. There had been a young boy buried there from the 1800s. The original owners of the house had lost their son, and in order to be close to him, they buried him where they could always visit, in their basement, in a hidden room at the end of a labyrinth of hallways. I wish I could say this was the only time I experienced a ghostly presence in that house, but maybe I'll leave that for another episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It's based on my actual experience. If you want more creepy tales, then be sure to take the subscribe button to your basement and as it screams for help, buried in a hole with a long dead like button, make sure to carve a comment into its flesh before you bury it alive and then brag about it to all who will listen. I've been Shannon, and this has been Psychology of the Unknown.